and today we are looking at Uncle Tom's Cabin. So this is the first of three lectures. Um, not that long. Today we're going to do a summary of the book. There we go. <laughs> we're going to summarize most of the book. I've left the ending a little bit open, so there are some things to discover, but um, I think some of the plot points um, can be sometimes confusing for first-time readers, so we'll go over those. And then in the second lecture, we'll talk a little bit about the author and a few of the themes. And then the third lecture, we're going to continue that, um, looking at the um, other aspects and things about the novel that you need to know. And that one will be face to face in person. So I, if you download these notes, you'll see that there are some um, additional slides before this lecture. I was going to give you guys some historical background about slavery, but I think most of you probably know um, a little bit about the timeline of slavery and then later on segregation. And if you don't, you can always look at that timeline if you want a better understanding of where we are in the historical context. You can definitely take a look at that. So here we have Tom and little Ava. Um, I don't love this picture because Tom is a little bit older than he should be. Um, and I think that a lot of the depictions of Tom are older than he should be. But I do like this idea of um, the friendship between these two, which we see in the book and how children are often free from the prejudices of their parents. Okay, so let's talk about the author before we jump into the text. This is Harriet Beecher Stowe. She lived from 1811 to 1896, so quite a long life, especially for someone of that age, and published more than 30 books. Of course, her best-selling book was uh, the one we're going to talk about, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and that made her a celebrity. She was born in Connecticut to a minister who had seven sons, um, who also then became ministers. So she had a Christian upbringing, which you are going to definitely see um, the theme of religion in this book. We'll talk about that more next time. And she, her sisters pioneered education and suffrage for women. So um, trying to be progressive and as they were working for the right to for women to vote, she was working for um, abolition, for um, the freedom of slaves. She did also work at a t as a teacher at Hartford Female Seminary and she began writing there. Her husband was a theology professor and they also had seven children um, and so what happened too is that she lived up north in Connecticut and then she moved um, later on to Ohio where she saw a little bit more um, of the the slavery question as it was called back then um, than she did when she was further further north um, and then they they now, um, Ohio is a little bit further north, and it, it was in the Union during the Civil War, but where she lived was right on the border of Kentucky, which was a um, border state, meaning that there were some people from Kentucky who joined the Union, and there were other people from Kentucky who joined the Confederacy. And so one of her children died from cholera, um, and she saw the events going on in Kentucky of people taking children away from enslaved women. And it made her very sympathetic to the cause and want to do something about it. Um, later on, she and her family moved to Maine and they lived there until her death in 1896. So quite a bit after the book was published in the 1850s. Her broad range of interests uh, resulted in a lot of different publications. So even though she's really known for this book, she wrote children's textbooks, she wrote advice books on homemaking and child rearing, um, biographies, and also religious studies. Quite an interesting life. Um, oh, I want to say before I move on to that, this is um, a lot of people make broad statements about women back then and you can see you know from Harriet Beecher Stowe's life you know she did not women did not have the right to vote but that doesn't mean that they weren't active in 
politics and uh, and issues of the day. And this is one of the themes of the book, that women have this domestic sphere, that they have influence over their homes, and that even though they might not have formal political power, they can still... Um, show their um, religion, their morals, and their strength. So something to look for as we go. All right, so let's get into the actual text. Um, we begin at the Shelby Farms. This is where our initial scene is set. And we have two protagonists, Tom and Eliza, just as their lives are going to change. So a Kentucky farmer, Arthur Shelby, he's kind of described as a country gentleman, but he has some need of money and decides to sell two of his slaves to a coarse, disgusting slave trader. And the slave trader is painted out to be almost worse than Arthur Shelby, but they're two sides of the same coin. They're both part of the problem. So Uncle Tom, and I think this is where we get the depiction of him as a little bit older. He's really middle-aged at this point. He's supposed to be maybe around 30, maybe 40. He's a middle-aged man who's been with Shelby since they were both young. And Harry, who is the son of Eliza, and that is Mrs. Shelby's maid. So he has promised his wife that he will not sell Harry um, because he doesn't want to hear about it, but he is planning on selling him. So Eliza, being a maid and being um, one of the indoor slaves, you had people who were slaves inside and um, were part of the house hold, I don't want to call it staff. They were part of the household, um, yeah, staff for lack of a better word. And then you had the slaves that were outdoors. Often the outdoor slaves had a harder life. She doesn't know what's going to become of Harry. He, um, Mr. Shelby shows him off as being a very bright boy who's kind of comic, and they, they kind of make fun of him as he does impressions of people. Um, and she just can't bear the idea, not only that she herself will be in slavery for the rest of her life, but also that this is the fate that will fall on Harry, that he'll be ripped away from her at a very young age, and then she'll never know what happens to him. So she goes and warns Tom and his wife and their children, um, and Tom is very loyal to his master and to God, and he refuses to run. And I think this is where the derogatory term of Uncle Tom comes. Um, he is not, as that term sometimes should suggests he's not a slave who snitches on other slaves and tells the master what's going on but he is loyal to a fault um and it is part of his his faith that he wants to um he allows himself he allows this to happen he also sort of doesn't believe that shelby will do this because they have been together for so long so at this point we have kind of a dual plot in terms of structure. So we follow Eliza north uh, as she tries to run away, and then we follow Tom south as he's sold to various homes, um, each one kind of getting progressively worse. So the story structurally goes back and forth to kind of do a compare and contrast of these two people and what has become of them. So Eliza's journey is quite a difficult one. Um, at the end of my next presentation, I have an excerpt kind of showing some of the things that she has to go through. Eliza has a husband, um, and she is hoping um, to meet him in Canada because he has also run away. So one of the things to watch for, and we'll talk about this more, but one of the things to watch for are how families are being um, ripped apart and how they have to really fight to stay together. Um, their, their family life is dictated who they marry, whether they can marry. All of those things are dictated by their masters. And, um, and then to have children, sometimes um, they would be married off to have children on purpose so that their, their master would have more capital, more people to sell, um, and then have those children taken from them and breaking up these, um, these family units. 
So Haley, who's that the slave trader we talked about a moment ago, he pursues her, and there's a harrowing scene of Eliza crossing a half-frozen Ohio River. There are ice chunks floating by, and she has to um, bravely take her son across to try to get to the north. They come to a Quaker settlement. Now, the Quakers were, um, and are still today, the Quakers are pacifists. So they were very anti-slavery, and they believed in um, helping the runaway slaves. So many of these homes were part of the Underground Railroad, the series of houses where people could stay as they made their way up into Canada. So Canada... Um, part of the British Empire at that time still and slavery had been illegal there um, since the 18 I think 30s 20s or 30s so they're taken in at this Quaker settlement and by coincidence <laughs> George is also there and the family is reunited so look for the contrast between the Shelby household and the Quaker settlement and also at this point Tom's loyalty is sort of shown by Stowe as a virtue but also a detriment um, so while Eliza is also a Christian her courage in, in leaving even though that's illegal is the right Christian thing to do to save her family so uh, in the meantime, Tom is traveling to the south. So he's been ripped from his family. He's on a boat down the Mississippi. And now, because Eliza ran away, Haley will not let him out of his sight. So while on board, Tom might, meets an angelic little white girl named Eva. Um, we saw her in the first picture, the blonde girl. And she quickly becomes friends with him. Then she falls into the river and Tom dives in to save her. And her father is so grateful that he buys Tom as a reward. Um, I put that in quotes because there would be other things that he could have done there, including setting Tom free. They travel to New Orleans where Tom finds himself in kind of a similar situation as the Shelby household, though, of course, not as um, stable as he once thought that was. He becomes invaluable to Sinclair that he starts taking over more and more of the um, responsibilities around the firm and he forms a very deep friendship with Ava in part because of their Christian faith. So they both believe in God and they are um, both devout Christians. Then we move back up to Eliza. Eliza's family is still in peril because what had happened at this time is that the Fugitive Slave Act was passed. Prior to the passing of that act, fugitive slaves could run up to the north and they could find freedom. When the Fugitive Slave Act is passed, that means that people can come and hunt for those slaves to return them to their owners. So the, this is an important plot point in the book, and there are politicians that we will see discussing um, various um, points of the law in domestic scenes. So they're still in a household talking about this, um, but they're talking about it from a far away perspective, right? They're removed from the real situation. And at a certain point, when these politicians is going to be confronted with the realities of this situation, of what this slave act and what laws like it have actually done to people. In the meantime, Tom has been sold again. Um, the former owner, St. Clair, um, wanted decided that he was going to sell his slaves but then he died and so this shows um the author is trying to show here that even though you might have someone who seems like they are a kind slave owner you can never count on that um, and as a slave, you're, you're subject to someone else's whims. You're subject to um, when this person dies, they're, they're, they are considered property. And they are sold off like property, like part of an estate sale. Um, 
So this time Tom is sold to a vicious man, Simon Legree. He whips and beats his slaves. He will not allow any religion in his household. We've had hints of slave owners like this earlier on, a little bit earlier on in the book, but they were like more rumors and things that the slaves had heard about from um, neighboring plantations. So Tom's faith is really tested. He's abused, he's um, beaten, and he comes to the point where he's not even sure if he does believe in God. But he meets and befriends Cassie and Emmeline. Cassie was Legree's slave who was sexually abused by her, uh, by him, rather, sorry, and essentially had many children by this man who were taken away from her. Um, this is a difficult thing to talk about, and so in the book, because at that time, um, you wouldn't have too many hints about sex, but it's, it's pretty clear what's going on. And um, because of that, she had a child and she um, refused to let that child be taken from her. And I don't want to spoil what happens there, what she does, but it is quite an emotional scene that she's describing. Emmeline, now that Cassie is getting older, has basically come in to be his new um, sex slave. There's really no other way of putting it. He is raping these women. And so Tom sees now what's happening to Cassie, sees what's happening to Emmeline, and refuses to um, continue to let his his faith be the reason that, he, you know, he's not going to stop them from running away and, in fact, encourages them to run away. So toward the end of the book, um, there are some people who are able to find peace in Canada, you can imagine, <laughs> and others who are set to a darker faith, unable to escape slavery. Um, that is essentially it. So I hope that this helps you guys to understand a little bit better. I know I talked about the themes a tiny bit more than I would in, in other places, but just to have a good understanding of what is happening in the book, the structure in particular, this dual structure of the North and the South and going back and forth between the two to show that contrast. And um, it, it does jump a little bit. So watch for that. But really try to follow Eliza's story um, with Harry and George and then Tom's story as he travels down South. All right. Rita likes. I hope you like this book. Um, I think that, you know, the, the, it's not just a, a good book kind of an important book and um yeah so i hope that you do enjoy it roots by alex haley is another book that is quite similar now it's interesting because it's it's historical fiction um haley traced back his roots he looked at his ancestry and, and describes um different people who were his ancestors beginning in Africa. So a little bit of fiction to kind of fill in the gaps, but based on um, the real people in his life. It's an amazing book. It's quite long, but it is worth it. Um, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So yes, again, kind of set during the same time period. And we have Huck Finn and Jim on the raft together um, as friends. The Help by Catherine Stockett. Now, this book is kind of, I don't know how to put this, it's a, it's a tiny bit problematic, um, but I still think that it is a good book and it is interesting. It wasn't written that long ago, but it depicts life in 1960s, um, just a little bit before the civil rights movement in the South. So you have um, household servants who are being paid, but it is kind of a similar setup to what the plantations looked like previously. Colson White has the Underground Railroad, takes a different look at history. So it's an alternate history novel, but it's telling the story of two slaves in the southeastern United States who um, try to find freedom by following the Underground Railroad, which in this book 
is an actual like rail transport system um, in addition to the safe houses and and secret routes of the actual um, past so it is um, quite fascinating and he was inspired by Frederick Douglass who is not on here because we are going to read him and um, and the stories of um, of Harriet Jacobs as well. Okay, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, so Little Women is interesting. It's not to do with race relations, but I put it in here because the author, Louisa May Alcott, is kind of writing in the same tradition as Harriet Beecher Stowe. We have transcendentalism having um, an impact on her writing here. It is the, the lives of women and showing um, their improvements through Christianity, which is also a large theme in this book. So kind of a similar literary tradition that that author was working in, in some sense. So that's it. Um, if, you, if you like this book, I hope that you like some of those. And I'm excited to talk with you more about it and then to see your thoughts on the novel.